We are light beings. We are created by light. Only due to light we exist. And we emit light. And if we see our energy, if we see that we are not just primitive, then we understand how we need to live in our life. Hello, this is Dr. Edith Ubuntu Chan. Welcome to The Dr. E Show, a show exploring the frontiers of our human possibilities in areas like health and wellness, science and spirituality, quantum biology, and conscious living, so that together we can awaken the best of ourselves and create our most joyful and fulfilling lives. You know that question everybody asks? If you could invite anybody over for dinner, dead or living, who would you invite? Well, for me, without a doubt, it would be today's guest, Dr. Konstantin Korkov. I don't know Dr. K's actual IQ, but I'm pretty sure he's a genius. Using his unique background in quantum physics, computer science, and optics, he spent the last 30 plus years researching such fascinating topics as consciousness, telepathy, sports performance, the energy of space, quantum biology, medicine and healing, and the new science of water. And the results of his research and implications for the future of humanity is nothing short of mind-blowing. While on the surface, some of these topics may sound a little soft or new agey to some listeners, rest assured, Dr. K is as hardcore of a serious scientist as they get. Dr. K has published over 200 papers in leading journals on physics and biology. He holds, I think, is this 17 patents? I, five, 17, 15, 17, something was this thing. Yeah. He holds 17 patents on biophysics inventions, and he has written 10 books. Uh, now it seems to me it's 11 or 12, something of this kind. He has written 11 or 12 books which have all been translated into many languages. He's okay. the professor of computer science and biophysics at St. Petersburg Federal University of Information Technologies, Mechanics and Optics. He's the deputy director of St. Petersburg Federal Research Institute of Physical Culture. He's the president of a bunch of things. The list goes on and on like this. So without further ado, please help me in welcoming the inventor of the famous gas discharge visualization technology, a man whose passion and contribution to the future of humanity has been nothing short of awe-inspiring, the one, the only, Dr. Konstantin Korkov. Thank you, oh. Dr. K.A. It's such an honor to have this opportunity to chat with you. Thank you, thank you so much. It's, of course, uh, very flattering for me. Um, but uh, first of all, I'm very simple guy, very simple. <laughs> so we can discuss just by simple people. No, no way. <laughs> you know, I'm a huge fan of your work in a similar way to Gerald Pollack, where you are such a genius and you're able to take such complex science and technology, but distill it down and align it to simple principles of life that I think intuitively we all know in our heart and soul to be true. You know, I love that you use science to, to verify and research what the ancients have been teaching us for millennia. Could you tell us how you got on this journey? What, what drives you to be so endlessly curious? Because it's some serious devotion of 30, 35 years of much more than full time. It looks like you travel all around the world. You're always involved in many, many projects. What got you onto this path? You see, first of all, we need to understand, we live in 21st century. It's absolutely new stage of development of humankind. Now it's a lot of uh, discussion in uh, science, whether we have 25,000 years of development, 15,000 years, or a million years of development. So it means that what we know about human development, about human civilizations, about uh, genetic development of humankind, it's only first steps. I believe that our science is only uh, like in kindergarten. Yeah. We think that we, we know a lot. 
But in reality, we just start to understand what's going on in, in, in the universe, what's going on around ourselves, and who we are. And it's really exciting. When I look every day to news, to internet, then I see something is going on every day. In science, in culture, in uh, so, uh, social life. And it's amazing. That is why life it is tremendous adventure. And it allows us to give us a lot of interesting topics, a lot of uh, beautiful topics. But of course, it has its uh, ups and downs. In like a zebra, white strip, and black strip. <laughs> so it's inevitable. So it's for everybody. That is why, when, but when you think about positive thinking, when you think about development, your own development, development of other people, humankind, life is very, very interesting. So for me, I wake up and I see every day as new step in this wonderful adventure. Most of your research is quite unconventional very breakthrough frontier of the frontier pioneering research that you're doing. How did you cultivate such a tremendously open-minded attitude about life? Because many of your discoveries are just completely breaking fundamental understanding of reality. So that takes a tremendously open mind to do the kind of research that you do. You're right, because I try to uh, go to the boundaries. We know that a lot of scientists, they are bound by their academic restrictions, by their position, by their colleagues, and they are afraid. For me, I'm not afraid because I'm absolutely free. What's advantage of my life, advantage of life of Russian scientists, that we are absolutely free to do what we want. And we have absolutely no restrictions. That's why we can come to the boundaries where most of Western scientists are afraid of. And it's not only myself. We have Can you talk about how is the, the Russian system supportive of that breakthrough, different from, say, the American system? No. We have no support at all. Oh, so where do you get funding for all of your research? You see, funding are given by higher force, by the government. <laughs> So you don't need to think about where to get it. You, don't, you need to think what to do, what you want to achieve. Then it will come. I have many stations in my research, in my life, when I was needed some funding for research, for activity, and it was coming. But of course, you need to be clever, you need to be open-minded, and you need to rely on your angels. And believe wow. that they this is an amazing conversation already. <laughs> Tell us about that process. Tell us, I'm sure that even those audience members who aren't really into the science part of it, everybody wants to know the secret to this kind of abundance that you're talking about. Tell us how you stay in that flow. How does that work? There are absolutely no secret. It is known for millenniums, for centuries. Always it was people who was living like this, who was living in a flow. You know that you need to feel the flow of the energy around yourself and just to follow this flow. And it doesn't matter where you have it in science, in everyday life, in your private activity, in your business. If you feel it, you follow. Plus, of course, we need to understand that it's, uh, it's not just uh, a simple current. It may be big waves, it may be some hurricanes, it may be rain, it may be very bad weather. So it's, it's normal. So if you are having some goal, high goal, and it doesn't matter what whether it is science, business, love, uh, your personal life, then you can develop. And you need to believe that life is organized for us. Life on the earth it is tremendous organization of high forces for us that would help us always. But you need to be focused, you need to be concentrated, and then you need to understand what you do. Then, then it will be helpful. So is it that if you are aligning your passions and missions to what is in the highest good of all, the universe always supports that? 
Yes, absolutely. Not always. Not always. <laughs> no. no. Again, it's not easy process. It's not just so you go and have only some rewards and everything is coming to you. No, of course not. Of course, you need to understand that it is uh, some victories, some failures. You need to uh, be able to win and you need to be able to lose. It is very, very important. And when you lose, when you have some obstacles, you need to understand obstacles, are, they are created to help you. To understand what you are doing wrong. And then to overcome it somehow, to overpass and move forward. So how do you know, what is the balance between staying in the flow where things feel smooth versus the discipline of working through hardships? How can you balance that? Or how do you know when, you know what, I'm just hitting my head against the wall with a problem, it's time to change my course. How do you decide that? You know, that I was for, I used to be a professional athlete for many, many years, and we you know. If you don't train every day, twice a day, you have nothing, just nothing. Same is everywhere. If you are in science, business, family life, then you need to do it every day. It's a lot of routine, it's a lot of boring work, lots of, but it's inevitable. If you do this, you can achieve something. If you jump here, there, like many people do, a little bit here, a little bit there, it will be nothing. Just nothing. So, first of all, persistence, hard work, but work could be interesting for you. That's why it is important to do different things. For example, I sit before my computer, and after an hour or two, I am very tired. So, I go, I make some exercises, then I make, after in some break, I go and make some homework, like cleaning homes, cleaning dishes. Then it allows uh, to change activity. And this allows your brain to be active. Plus, what's the, the most important is good night sleep. This is the most important because now it's proven that during the night, brain is cleaned out. Yes. So we have a lot of activity in the brain, but as any activity, any uh, transmitters, any uh, Molecule they dissolve and they should be cleaned out. So night time it's time when our body and first of all our brain is cleaned out. That is why if you have good night sleep, you are active. If you don't have it, then forget me. You can do nothing in your life. From your research, what are other you know, our, our audience, most of our audience have read my book. It's called Super Wellness, and it's a collection of, of all the self-care tools that are free, simple, but profoundly powerful for our well-being. What are your top favorite self-care tools besides good quality sleep that's based on your personal experience and also this amazing research you've been involved in for 30 years? Um, so one of the line of our activity, of our research, is just uh, well-being. And this is one of our uh, most important line, longevity, and we understand what does it mean and what should be done. Yes. So, first of all, and the most important, you need to be active. And you need to be in good mood. And they're most important for life. People you need to be active and you need to be in a good mood. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. So you need to be positive to the world positive to other people, to everything. When people are annoyed, when they say, oh, this guy is good, bad, this guy is bad, they're doing bad to me, oh, what is a bad day, what is a bad environment, then, of course, they uh, can't make their life normal. I, for me, it was very impressive once, I was reading memories of one guy uh, in Paralympic uh, movement, because we are involved deeply in this field, who was totally uh, handicapped. He had no legs, mm -hmm. not at all. And for him, of course, every movement, everything was very difficult. And you know that, he, but still, he had to go around, he had to go to the bus, to go to some places. And you can imagine, for this person, it's very complicated. Because people, even inevitably, they can uh, touch him, they can push him. And then, uh, so he was very annoyed. 
but then good idea. Okay. It is my problem that I have these struggles. Why would other people be negative to me? So I accept it as inevitable situation in my life. And I need to accept it as positive situation. And he started coming there with jokes, with uh, asking people to help. And he thought the world should have changed. People became positive. They started talking, they started helping him, and all his life changed. So it means we create our life. We create our environment. How we have this attitude to life and environment, Life have positive attitude to us. Uh, it's based on a very simple law of Newton. Uh, this uh, the response is equal to your force. If you give negative force, it will be negative response. If you give positive force, it will be positive response. So that's very easy. <laughs> if you follow this, then uh, you will make your life much, much easier and much more positive. Mm. What in your research has actually proven that that's not just a nice idea, but that the physics of reality actually aligns to that very nice philosophy that we all love to talk about and hear, you know, you get what you put out there, you know, like attracts like, and the, the universe is just your mirror, and so on. We all hear these things, and we love the ideas, but from a serious scientist perspective, what research studies have actually proven that to be true? Uh, you see, now we have a special sensor. The name of the sensor is Sputnik. <laughs> it uh, refers to all the Russian Sputnik. And this sensor allows to measure activity of environment. And we have, after thousands of experiments in different parts of the world, we have clear understanding what is positive environment for human beings, what is negative. Mm -hmm. That's why we can come to any place, would it be apartment, uh, would it be house, would it be territory, take measurements, of course, with different instruments. We're using electromagnetic field, we're using uh, infrasound, uh, noise le level, uh, solarization level, and we understand what is good and what is bad. And then, we, of course, we can recommend what should be changed in this particular place or where to place, where to put your house, how to position your house if you build a new uh, house, and uh, what will be beneficial for human life. So that is why this sensor allows me, I can put the sensor anywhere in, in, in the room, in the audience, and take measurements. And then people try to meditate in positive way. And we see on sensor, sensor response, we have made hundreds of experiments of this kind, and it's very easy to make it this type of experiment and it makes environment much more balanced so entropy of an environment drops down entropy is a measure of chaos so the higher the entropy the more chaotic the environment if you leave a child in a room unattended for a day Entropy increases thousands of times. Yes, I have a three-year-old. I'm very familiar with that pattern. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. So it means when people have positive emotions, when they meditate, when they send their positive emotions, they decrease the level of entropy in the environment. When people have negative emotions, they increase entropy. And, of course, um, it's not dependent on distance. We have many experiments when people were sending their intention to our laboratory, to our sensors, from long distance. We had many experiments with Lynn McTaggart of this kind, with Russian scientists, with American scientists, and it was 90% confirmed, 90%. So, we need to understand, with our intention, with our emotions, we change physical properties of our environment. It's physical properties. I can give you a very, very clear example, understandable example. I have a group of uh, colleagues and friends in uh, Moscow. They have society, and uh, they were interested to prove it as well. So they are using our instruments, they are using different sensors. And they did very 
interesting and amazing experiment. One of them was quite high in aviation industry. So he made a special deal and a group of people was taken by military plane and military plane was uh, flying to very high altitude, 20,000 meters. It's uh, maybe it's, uh, about 60,000 feet. Mm -hmm. And their level of radiation is very high. So only military plane uh, fly at this high altitude. And there uh, they were they able to measure level of radiation around themselves. Then they start meditating, several people, and level of radiation dropped down. Wow! Yes, absolutely. So they balance the environment around themselves. They decrease the level of entropy, and this uh, allows uh, radiation drop down. You see. So this example. That is why we need to understand. We create our environment. This is so empowering because so many of us are concerned about the the cell phone towers and the the mobile phones and all the tablets, and we have so many electronic devices, we're worried about the EMF fields influencing our health. And maybe they do if we just allow them, but we actually have the ability to harmonize that and bring balance back to our environment just through mind, no. body. Don't, let's, do uh, let's make uh, everything in one soup. <laughs> so there are many factors. We have a lot of um, damaging factors in our life. Yes. Our we understand this. Yes. So, of course, mobile uh, phone towers, electromagnetic uh, inductors, those are really bad. So, we need to understand how to protect ourselves from this. Yes. And we have some physical principles how to make it using different uh, shieldings, using grounding using different protection devices, and uh, they really help. So it's one of line of our um, study. People um, send to our lab different devices, we test them, and then we can define their efficiency. So this is efficient 20%, this is 100%, this is zero. So that is why uh, meditation and your positive attitude is essential for your life, but for protection, of course, you need to use technology. So if you have a choice, create the best external environment possible that's harmonious to your well-being. But when you don't have a choice, you always have your consciousness. The radiate the best possible energy. So it's, it's both. Of course, we need to understand that we live in a complicated world. We don't want to go to caves in the mountains. It's impossible for us. And to throw out our mobile phones. But even to using mobile phone, you need to be careful Don't, not to keep it nearby your head because some people have some brain in their, in their heads. <laughs> yes. So just to use earphones yeah, uh, to keep it somewhere away from your body. So it's, it's a simple topic, that, but people should know this. Use SMS messages, use different messaging. It's uh, simple, but it allows you to keep your health. That, because you know that the level of brain cancer increases tremendously. Yes. In particular for children. And why? It's understandable. So, uh, to protect children, for example, from talking on a mobile phone, to teach them how to do this. That's essential for every parent. So, we need to understand. We need to use our consciousness. But at the same time, we live in technological society and we need to use technology. Tell us about your many decades of research in water. I first came across your work in that, what is that documentary called? I think it's called Water, a Great Mystery. Yes, yes, yes. I came out so many years ago. So you've really been at this research for a very long time. Tell us a few highlights of the breakthroughs that a new understanding of water that um, you know some of our audience if you haven't already watched the amazing interview with Dr. Gerald Pollack that's a nice introduction but I'd love to hear about your research into water. Of course first of all I have tremendous respect to Jerry he's a great scientist great person and I love him and we meet practically every year or several times a year 
in different countries and every time it's amazing uh, experience to meet him and in my last book in our last book uh, the emerging science of water this book you can find oh so much what an amazing distillation of the best of the best information out there yes absolutely so it is even together with my dear friend professor vladimir vayekov from moscow university he is a great scientist in water he is doing this uh, for many decades as well so uh, we are deeply in this field and we understand water it is life without water life is impossible we are water that's why in the book the last chapter it is our concept of water as carrier of consciousness and uh, so every day i start with a big glass of water and not one glass so when i wake up first thing in my life i make two glasses of pure water and then during the day i drink a lot of water of course i drink coffee i drink tea uh, as well uh, but water it is the most essential so that's why we need to teach our children to drink water not this uh, sweet uh, drinks because it's it's total uh, it's devastating to drink coca cola to drink sweet sweets sweet drinks and this is damaging for health yes and uh, now we have a new understanding of water uh, this quantum field theory created by uh, Emilio del Giudici was genius real genius i was happy to be friends with him and he was living in our apartment visiting st petersburg uh, yes it was a wonderful time with him and uh, this the concept now it is proven experimentally by Dmitry Konovalov another great scientist so uh, we understand what that is, does it mean memory of what we understand what does mean structure of what mm -hmm. and we understand how to make it so now it is a lot of means how to make the best water from simple like using filters using uh, different uh, purification technologies to much more more complicated from simple way what, what they do in and oriental countries where they always make water moving fountains moving water different uh, streams when i go to china when i go to japan the first thing i like to do to see their gardens mm. because it's one of the wonders of the world and in the gardens obligatory we see streams we have water ponds and it's always life water so we have life water and it is water that is moving that has its own activity and we have dead water yes that is staying in the ponds and that is contaminated so uh, to me it's very exciting moment that now first of all we have really very serious science on water and of course uh, the more we study the more we understand that there are a lot of uh, questions a lot of enigmas in water a lot it's, it's so interesting it's amazing and we try to uh, study we have special instruments to study water and uh, now in october we plan to produce a new instrument it is so named uh, bio well element mm. a new device based on of course all our uh, knowledge that allows to study water liquids like oils essential oils uh, like uh, different homeopathy preparations that allows to study um, for example seeds leaves wine uh, whatever gemstones so it's uh, it will be and to get uh, information about energy of all these products one of the topic to study good food life food and dead food yes and show people the, the difference Fascinating. Is it also based on electrophotography technology? Yes, absolutely. It's all based on our idea that we're developing for maybe 30 years about electrophotonics, about uh, bioelectrography. So it's a different thing, but it's in principle it's all, all the same. Mm -hmm. 
because this is science that allows to see quantum level of operation of, uh, of nature. And of course, on quantum level, you see a lot of uh, features that is impossible to see on other levels. Why is your technology not used everywhere on the front page news? Why is it not yet mainstream? Because it's so important, this work that you're bringing forth. You see, I'm a scientist, but I'm not a manager. <laughs> manager. You're not, not a marketer? No, that's why in modern world, it's very difficult to move something forward. So that's why for me, it's interesting to make research, to develop something new, but I'm very weak in business. That's why, that's why it's so. <laughs> So. Mm, but you're a great manifester, so maybe through this interview, we can manifest some people who will support this amazing work that you're doing. Yes, I hope that now more and more people, they will benefit from using our technology. You know that in BioWell, we have family. We have family of friends, we have family of colleagues, and every meeting that we have in different countries, it's like a, a wonderful time together. So that's why, for me, it's not uh, the way how to make business, how to earn money. I'm not interested in money. It's the way how to give people a new understanding of life. Yes. That our life, it's not just material. It's not just clothing or our body. But it's much more than that. We are light beings. We are created by light. Only due to light we exist. And we emit light. And if we see our energy, if we see that we are not just primitive, then we understand how we need to live in our life. So for a lot of people, it's a big change. Plus, of course, it helps in a very practical topic with health issues, with understanding of problems, and helps people to be more helping, more healthy and, and happy. It's as if our, our third eyes are closed, but you're opening it back up for us through your technology. Yes, absolutely, because we live in the world of technology. It's a very tremendous achievement of humankind. Without a technology, without mobile phones, our computers, uh, life doesn't exist anymore for us. And we need to use it to the most benefit for ourselves. I noticed your third eye looks extraordinarily active. You have a lot of energy there. Is this something you consciously cultivate or since childhood you've always had this powerful intuitive gift? No, of course, um, you need to develop. First of all, for me, everything is interesting. If you look around my room, you have thousands of books, thousands. And I always go to bookstore in every country and buy books in different languages. And uh, so for me, it's interesting to know about um, civilization, about history, about biology, uh, about medicine. Uh, so it's so interesting. So if you are interested in life, if you ask, then you will have questions. You know that universe gives you a lot of answers, but you need to ask. If you don't ask, you would ne never have any answer. So stay curious, is your yeah, Stay open to life. Don't be afraid of life. That's the most important. Speaking of being afraid of life, your other amazing book is an older book, Light After Life, is helping us to see that maybe there's life after life, you know, that, that death is not the end. Uh, yes, absolutely. You know, that this is a very complicated topic, of course. But now we have more and more scientific data that our consciousness, our spirit, our soul exists after life. And uh, together with other scientists, I, I try to understand something in this field, uh, to study something. Of course, it's very first steps. Um, and we use our scientific instruments. If you look, I have a very good uh, colleague and friend, uh, Professor Gary Schwartz from Arizona University, who is doing very deep research in this field. Yes. And they're using our instruments as well. So our idea to prove that even after death, our spirit, our consciousness exists. So it is possible to communicate with this type of consciousness. It's possible to get some information, but of course we need to be very cautious because 
from ancient wisdom, it is very well known that it may be dangerous. I believe that we have positive spirits, negative spirits, and that's why we need to be very, very careful when we communicate with afterlife. Mm -hmm. But we did experiments. It was very interesting experiments, and from time to time we do something in this field. So I'm sure that uh, in time, science will have more and more understanding of this topic. Wow, speaking of being careful, I saw a short clip in a show on Gaim TV about the use of psychedelic medicines. And they quoted some research you did of participants before and after ayahuasca ceremony. Yes, absolutely. So uh, many, several times, not many, but several times, I was um, involved in ayahuasca ceremonies yes. in, in Peru, in uh, Ecuador, in uh, Panama, in the United States, in Europe. Because for me <clears throat> to study uh, altered state of consciousness, uh, and this is condition where people transform to this state in the process of different ceremonies. So it may be uh, both in, uh, in meditation, deep meditation state, or it may be induced by some psychedelics. So ayahuasca, it is very interesting effect because it has, uh, it allows people to transform to the social state, but it seems to me this has uh, no negative effects. So because I write uh, articles on this topic, and up till now, we don't see negative effects of ayahuasca. In so, the show, it showed that the field was weakened during or after the ceremony. Can you we share? Are uh, we are measuring uh, physical field. Mm -hmm. We are measuring photons. And we are measuring in some uh, range, in some uh, spectrum. So, uh, in altered state of consciousness, people transform to much higher frequency. And this is both frequency of our brain and frequency of all the body. And it is related to much higher frequency of light. And this is, uh, we, can, we can't measure it with a um, well, but we did, for example, experiments with very sensitive infrared cameras. And there it was amazing effect, amazing. Oh, wow. Yeah, so there we were able to see the really change of spectrum when people transform both of the functions. And it doesn't matter whether it is ayahuasca, whether it is very strong healer who can do this, or is it people, group people in meditative state, so we can detect this. So it is again a um, main idea that I have tried to prove. Our consciousness it is a very strong activity of our environment. So with our consciousness, we change not only ourselves, but we change everything. And of course, all people who are around, they are influenced. I can give you a very simple example. Uh, we, with my wife, we love opera. You love opera? Opera, yes, 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 yes. yes. Classical opera. And uh, very often, we try to go to different opera concerts in different parts of the world, top level to top level presenters. And when there are top level presenters, like, for example, Placid Domingo, or Netrebko, Rostovsky, uh, Rancher, many of them. Then, in the audience, we have this level of excitement. And I was able to measure, to take measurement of this with our senses. You bring your sensors to the opera? Yes, you yes. carry it with you everywhere? Yes, yes. Uh, yeah, I did this type of experiment, and I like it. Uh, so, those are in particular, Rene Fleming and Dmitry Krastovsky, and we see that really tremendous change of environment. And all the people who are in this hall, they are excited. Do you hear the cries of people after great performance? They are crying, they are shouting, they are applauding. But listen, sing opera singer in your, at home. Of course, it's, it's great. I love this music. I always have music, but it's a different situation, different expression. So it means that when people transform their own state and the great performance, they do this all the time. 
then they influence the environment and it influences all other people who are in this environment. Mm -hmm. That is, it has very simple, practical implication. Again, if you have positive attitude to everything, to the world, then you influence your environment and other people. If you have negative influence, you damage other people and you damage yourself. Can we talk more about the relationship between multiple beings interacting? Because um, in my book, I quoted some interesting research by these meditation practitioners who measured how regular meditation by advanced practitioners change crime rates in cities in a way that is exponential, as in 10 different people coming together have a 100x effect of one person. Did you find anything that is exponential relationship like that, of people interacting and, and joining hearts and minds together with a common consciousness? You know, that we have a very strong collaboration with Indian institutes, in particular Indian uh, University of Yoga. And uh, we have big uh, collaboration with American Institute of Yoga. And yoga, it's very strong technology, how people can really change their own state and environment. So it was a lot of experiments done in this field with measurement, very precise statistical measurement. And we can see that under the influence of meditation and yoga practice, people change not only themselves, but people change environment. For example, um, we can we are measuring water in the presence of this type of people, mm -hmm. and we see that water change parameters. You understand what that means? It means that we charge water, we structure this water. If you drink this water, of course, it has much more beneficial effect on our state. Same with holy waters. Yes. No, in many religions, and they use holy waters. And when believers come, they drink this water, they help them to be much more healthy. So, uh, same, we did experiments with seeds. And then we can compare sprouts with seeds induced by positive emotions, seeds in natural and induced by negative emotions. And you see the difference. So, that is... A uh, very, uh, I would say, clear experiment and very simple experiment that everybody can do. But they show us that our consciousness, it is active force in our life. Yeah, so if we're in a bad mood or we're in a good mood, we should, I think, see that it's just like now is not, is considered not good to be a polluter, to throw rubbish in the public, right? or to drive a car that is polluting the world, we are conscious of that, but I think we're starting to become conscious of how, how our mind, our moods, our consciousness is also can yes, uplifting or polluting the field at any moment. Yes, uh, society is changing. It's, of course, it's slow, it's not easy, but in many countries, when we go to in many countries, we see that countries become much, much cleaner than before. So people don't throw rubbish on the streets, now, finally, we think that we need to develop uh, plastic that would be decomposed by itself in time. And the same with our consciousness, same with our mind. So we need to be clean inside and outside. Then we can create really a good life around ourselves. Yes. I wanted to ask before when you said you drink water every day, what do you do? to charge up and structurize your water? I use, first of all, I use very good water. That's why in our home we have a system of filters. Then I use special device to structure water. And uh, this creates really structured water, with structured water. Is it Finally, a fixing device? Yes, it's uh, just a device. Then uh, finally we put this water in silver jar. Uh, where we have shungite and crystals. And what is kept in this jar for some time, and then we drink it. That allows us to have really good water. Wow. Do you ever get sick? Do you get colds or flus? Of course, as everybody. Because, you know, I travel every month to different parts of the world. 
of course, it's big load. It's uh, I'm not that young athlete anymore. So that's why, uh, but it's not very often, maybe once a year. I have some virus or something of this kind, but not more than that. When you're traveling and you don't have all your home devices, what are quick, easy ways to purify and structure your water on the go? First of all, um, we need to drink uh, good water when I travel. So I try to buy water, not in plastic bottles, but in glass bottles. Uh, I have some crystals with me and I try to put these crystals into water and uh, still I drink a lot of water. Then I uh, use every day um, sodium, mm -hmm. bicarbonate, sodium bicarbonate. So I baking, travel. Baking soda. Baking soda, yes, absolutely. I, I carry it with me all the time. And every morning I drink a glass of water with baking soda. One, giant spoon of baking soda because it helps a lot to balance pH of your body. Mm. And then do you do you bless the water or vortex it really quickly? Anything like that? Or is your body already structured because you have a clean consciousness? Uh, you see, uh, in most cases I don't have time for to do this. And <laughs> I'm always busy with something. Uh, that's why I'm using this uh, devices, baking soda, but I don't have time to manipulate with my water, meditate or water every time. No, it's no time. Mm -mm. So do you meditate? Yes, I meditate every day, obligatory. If I have time during the day, if I don't have time at night, in the morning, because it's very important to recharge yourself with yes. universal energy. Mm -mm. Before I ask you our last question, Please tell us where we can find your work and how we can support your research if there are up and coming projects that we can support you in. You see, we have a website bio-well.com and this website, you can find a lot of published papers. Not all of them, of course, but a lot in different languages. Uh, plus, I have books, uh, many books, maybe five or six or seven, I don't remember, in uh, amazon.com. Again, it's on, practically on all European languages. And of course, we always invite people to be a part of our family. Our instrument is not just for medical professionals. It's not only for analysis of health, but we have uh, strong development in water, in uh, environment, in studying uh, different uh, parts, uh, crystals, gemstones. So everybody who is interested to know more about themselves, about the environment, about life, we are very welcome. Great. And this new device, when will it come up, this new device that we can use to measure water and liquids and gels and so on? Now we are in the process of certification. So we need to have UL, we need to have CCU. So that's why uh, this takes time. So it will be ready by maybe October. Wow, soon, very soon. Because it's ready on the factory, but uh, before, first we need to make all documentation, all papers, manuals, descriptions, video manuals, and only then we can present it on big scale. Wow, exciting, congratulations. Thank you. All right. So you've studied such a huge diversity of topic, life after death, telepathy, sports performance, water, consciousness, and I've watched every episode of the ancient alien that was found by the Nazca lines that you've been involved in. I mean, what a huge diversity of topics. So after so many decades of studying so many different topics, if you were to just distill down to one simple principle for us, one most important piece of advice for us to have the best life possible, to tap into our next level of human possibilities, what would that one piece of advice be? Uh, you see, first of all, we need to accept life as tremendous adventure. And like in, in all adventures, like in all travels, you have positive moments, you have negative moments. So we need to understand this. Life is not just for pleasure, for fun. Life gives you a lot of wonderful presents, but at the same time, a lot of disappointments. So you don't need to be afraid of this. 
Second, you need to be open, open-minded to everything. And you need to look around. Our society is changing tremendously. Every decade, every year, we have something new, we have new understanding. That is why we need to be open to new information and we don't need to be afraid. Believe in your angels, believe in universal love, believe in your friends, in your relatives, in people around yourself, and try to make little steps just around yourself. And then, step by step, it would generate a lot of interesting topics. For example, now I am preparing a new book about Nazca. Nazca. Wow. Yes, yes, yes. And in this book, I found amazing data, for example, on the origin of ancient uh, technology that was used to create this ancient uh, buildings in Peru, in uh, Cusco, in different countries, and of course, origin of humankind. So it means that just little topic, they come to us by themselves. And we need to be open to see it, to accept it, and then to present to other people. That's important. Yeah, and your beautiful example of the magical life that is possible if you just listen to that guidance. Yes, that's possible. So if you if you open to the world, the world opens to you. That's the main principle. Wow, that could be a tattoo on somebody's arm right there. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you so much, Dr. K, for that amazing conversation. And those of you listening, you might want to listen back because there are so many powerful life gems that Dr. K shared with us. And I'm super excited to listen back from beginning to end of all the powerful insights that he shared with us. So thank you again for your generous time. I know you're a very busy guy. You travel all around the world. So this one hour has been so precious and such a gift. And I hope you guys also enjoy. Thank you, Dr. K. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you. Yes, and that's always being in contact. Thank you. Hi, friends. Did you love that interview? If you did, please leave a review and share with all your friends so that many more people can benefit from these game-changing insights. You can also go onto our website, dredithubuntu.com, and subscribe to our newsletter, where you'll receive free trainings and next-level ninja tools that we only share on our newsletter. Together, let's turn your life into a brilliant masterpiece.